Hello, Ben. Hello there, Kelly. So what are we playing today? Well, Kelly, we were going to play a bit of Fire Emblem Three Houses. I've been meaning to uh, do a bit of a spotlight for this for weeks, uh, but I only feel now, about 30 hours into the game, that I'm ready to show off all the different systems uh, and take a bit of a tour around the game. So... The best way to show it off, probably at least without doing any major spoilers, is I'll start a new game, we'll go through the opening bit, uh, it'll introduce some of the kind of the gameplay and mechanics, it'll show kind of the two halves of the game, and then if we've got time I'll jump into my save file, uh, which might give a few spoilers, so we'll do a big spoiler warning at that point, uh, and jump into a, a battle that I've got saved from, from about just over the halfway mark in the game, which probably shows off a little bit more the depth and the breadth of the combat. Um, so we'll start a new game. So Fire Emblem, its big thing is characters uh, can die permanently. Uh, it's a strategy RPG, so basically big. It's 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 3D chess, basically the best way to think about it. You have characters, you you develop them like you would in a JRPG, and you put your fight on a kind of um, a big strategy turn-based strategy map. And Fire Emblem is always done permadeath. So if your character falls in battle, um, they die permanently. Um, and this game offers a kind of few different variations on how difficult the game will be because obviously if your characters can die, you're going to tread carefully a little bit more. But uh, I mean, it does normal mode and hard mode. Um, normal mode's pretty easy, I must admit. I've been playing on normal mode and blitzing through the game pretty unchallenged. Okay, so um, we're starting on hard mode too. No, I'm not going to start on hard <laughs> mode. Uh, but what I was thinking about doing, so in my main file, uh, I, I'm playing on casual, so that's basically a character dies in battle, oh dear, what a pity, never mind, just losing for that fight they survive on. Classic is that permadeath. Right, okay. So there's kind of a few different ways of playing. You can play on normal or with casual, which basically is just a quick jaunt through the story. That's kind of what I'm doing on my main file. You could play normal with permadeath, which makes it a little bit more challenging because you've got to be more considerate around what you do in a fight. Yeah. And then you've got hard, casual, so you want to get more challenging, but you don't want to be punished too much. Or if you want to be a real masochist, hard and classic, <laughs> hard mode with permadeath. And I'm pretty sure you've got to really min-max your way through the game. So I'm playing casual on my main file, mainly because this is like a 60-hour game, and I really didn't have to. I didn't want to have to worry on my first playthrough about keeping the odd character alive, especially seeing as it was my first Fire Emblem game. But seeing as, I mean, we're going to start again. I'm going to treat this as my second playthrough save file. Uh, I'll play on Classic just to make it a bit more spiced up. Um, you connect online, and basically that seems to boil down to it gives you online leaderboards between load screens that says, like, who are the most played characters? Who's been invited tea time the most? And I might be able to show you that off in, in, in a bit. Um, so for the sake of brevity, I'll select no. I think you can change it in-game as well. Uh, so one of the best features uh, in the game, and I've just missed it, uh, I'll show you back on another load screen. It's a really cool little uh, sequence. Um, but the game is very story heavy, it's a JRPG, uh, it's not got a lot of cutscenes, but it has a few cutscenes like this, which are kind of full on animated, anime style cutscenes, and they're, 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 they're pretty good. Um, set and scene and all the rest of it. It's all pretty cryptic as well. Um, it's unf the, the, the overarching plot is unfolding over the course of the game. Does it be, is it something that becomes apparent later on, or is it still cryptic? To it's you know? still somewhat cryptic. Things have started to come together a little bit more. It unfolds bit by bit. But it should make sense by the end. Oh, it's I, not one I, of the crazy I, ones where you've got to look at YouTube videos to figure out what's going on. No, but I think you. So this game's got three houses, and for anyone who's kept up with it, basically there, uh, it'll become apparent when we start playing the game. But. There are three factions in the game, and you can choose to play as all three factions, and you select one for your time in the game, so effectively you will have to play this three times to get the full story, because I think each faction focuses on a different aspect of the overarching plot. Okay. Um, so is that three times through three endings? Yeah, there's actually four, because there's a fourth faction who's not one of the three houses, but they are a central faction that are in from the beginning of the game. It's the church that's central to the uh, the first half of the game. You can side with them um, and, and go down their storyline as well. So four times you'd have to play it through to get the full experience. So this is like a 300-hour game. <laughs> and that's fine, because... Spoiler alert, it's really good, and I'm kind of, I'm halfway through my first playthrough, and I'm kind of fully intending to play through it at least once more, probably at a much slower pace, yeah. um, with a different faction, but if you really wanted to, my god, this this is like Monster Hunter level of content. The only problem I can foresee is, 
this game's split into two distinct halves, and it's not a not a huge spoiler. Um, Nintendo published it before the, the game came out, but there's a massive time jump halfway through the game, and oh, it's kind of very dramatic. Um, so yeah, there's a time jump, and I imagine the part before the time jump is all going to be fairly generic for all the three houses, and then it'll split up wildly in the second part of the game. Um, but I'm only kind of, I only just vaguely know of what's going, what's going on here. I get things have started, they've become more apparent. I have okay. a little bit more of an idea of what's going on. Because, because, because up front, these characters are not in the game. Right, okay. Um, at least not that I've seen yet. Uh, this effectively is something that takes place way back in history. And this is us flashing forward now into the present. Okay, so back to basics then. How long has the game been out? Uh, it's been about a month. Uh, I think I've been playing it for three weeks now, so maybe three and a half weeks. Um, I've been meaning to do a video on it for ages, so it's been out a while. It's selling really well. It's so been number one. you're playing it on the Switch? It's only on the Switch. Only on the Switch, okay. Uh, it's the only Fire Emblem on a home console since the Wii, I'm going to say. Uh, big in... So Fire Emblem's got a long storied history. There's a lot of entries in the series. Mainly big in Japan in the 90s and the 2000s. The characters became more well known um, as Smash Brothers started to introduce them into the West. Yeah. You don't have to have played any of the Fire Emblems before. This is a completely standalone storyline and setting. I wish to have a look at you. Uh, and this is kind of the RPG elements coming in the game, starting to create a character. Um, so you can be a uh, boy or girl. Um, Byleth is the main character, although you can name them whatever you want because they are mute and never get called anything other than <laughs> Professor. Um, but if I'm a boy, I'm so just going to... So those are your two options. Yeah, so you yeah. basically you can be girl or boy, and that's pretty much it. I must admit, I actually probably prefer the, the girl's character model, but I, I'm going to prejudice. I still think it's weird when you play as, if, when men play as girls, mainly because I think it's largely to get the rocks off, you know, especially in MMOs. <laughs> I've seen far too many sexy bunny girls in Final Fantasy in the last couple of months to uh, to, to, to doubt that. So I'm gonna, I'll just choose boy with Byleth again. It'll be nice and boring like that. And I don't really know even if this plays into anything, but I'll, uh, I don't know, I'll just say I'm a ghost. Do not deceive. You would do well to keep your wit in line. All right, okay, so last time I played this, I just selected I'm immortal straight away, and she just went straight through. <laughs> so, the, the, I mean, this game, so yeah, you can choose a name. I'm just going to keep Byleth because... It, it really does not play into the story at all. Uh, Byleth is, is probably he's probably one of the weakest parts of the game, to be honest. He's kind of just this cipher, to, this faceless, nameless protagonist. Well, he's not faceless, but nameless, voiceless protagonist. And on what day were you born to this world? Oh, shit. Um, so, and again, this doesn't really seem to do too much, other than you get a birthday at some point in the year. In the, in the year. Okay, does it actually recognise your birthday in the game? Uh, yeah, because basically, oh shit, um, so let's go Red Wolf Moon, that sounds like a cruel month. And let's go 19 for whatever reason, uh, why not? Uh, so yeah, there's like, the game takes place like, along a calendar, it's just, it, 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 it'll, it'll become apparent as we go into it. But yeah, every, every character has a birthday. Right, okay. And you share yours with her? Yes. <laughs> so, this is kind of like... As one of the one of the many plot threads. There are there's here four factions, four main plot threads. They all have overlapping aspects, but they're distinct in their own rights. Um, this this kind of weird, strange, supernatural character. Um, I'll be honest. I think it's definitely the weaker part of the game. The better part is about the human characters doing human things and like dealing with like human bullshit and politics and factions and stuff like that. Uh, you so, described yeah. her to me before. I don't think I've ever met anyone like that. In any case, just put that out of your mind for now. So is it Back. mainly humans? Is there uh, a fantasy sort of the, other it's, definitely, races, it's definitely high fantasy, so mainly everyone's human. There are monsters to fight uh, in the back half of the first act of the game. Um, 
some people have pointy ears, and apparently that has significance in Fire Emblem law. I think it links them to dragons somehow, but I don't really know. So I mean, basically, you start the game, this is Geralt, he's your father, he's a mercenary, uh, he's trained you to be a mercenary as well. Um, and you're on the road doing stuff. He's legendary as well, he's like a well-regarded knight. Um, Please forgive our intrusion. We wouldn't bother you with a situation not dire. What do a bunch of kids like you want at this hour? And as you can tell, this, these are the three faction leaders. These are the heads of the houses. Basically, yeah. So this 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 is a whole trainer mission that's basically designed to introduce you to the faction, teach you the basics of combat, and start sowing the seeds of who you might want to side with. Yeah. So in the previous playthrough, you played uh, as a blue. Yes. Yeah, so you got the blue lions uh, led by Dimitri, uh, the black eagles led by Edelgard in the red. And then uh, the Golden Deer, led by Claude. And they're all fairly distinct. Yeah. Like, like, the Blue Lions are all kind of like, uh, they're very much like a chivalric knight faction. Um, the, the Black Eagles are more magical based, they've got a lot more mages. And the Golden Deer, they've got a lot more like um, strange kind of archers and stuff. Uh, a lot of these are my save files. So I've got 29 hours logged on the main and I'm just about halfway through the game. <laughs> um, so I'll just drop one on there. Um, oh, so there's a little sprite you talk Oh, yeah, so yeah. you can jump. If you press A, you can jump. <laughs> That's the best feature of the game. Stumbled upon that completely. You might as well accident. finish this video now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't need any more. Finish the game now. Even though I'm jumping, he runs to the end. So these factions in these three different houses, are they enemies, frenemies? Uh, so that you're in the kingdom, uh, this this kingdom, um, and it's split into three kingdoms. Uh, each faction belongs to a kingdom. They're at peace at the moment. And the central plot is that we all go to this academy and train to be military officers. And it's all like the, no the best and brightest of the nobility go to this academy. Um, and we'll be heading there after this mission. So this is the, the training mission. So this is when you first get introduced to the combat. Um, and basically, as I say, it's like 3D chess. So you highlight a unit, the blue's where you can move, the red's where you can attack. So if we, uh, I tell you what, let's move Claude up a little bit. Yeah, we know about Claude. So Claude's an archer, uh, which means he can attack from range. So if I stack him, uh, st stack him two, st two spots away, what I can do is then put another like melee unit in between him and him, so he's protected. Yeah. Okay. But what I will do is I'll weaken this guy with arrows first because he can't fight back at range. And it's very RPG, a lot of bars and numbers going up. Uh, so you have weapon durability, every character can be equipped with weapons and every time you use it, the durability goes down. If it breaks, you can still use it, but it's a lot less effective. And you can also do things called combat arts, which cost mega part portions of durability, but are okay. mega special moves. So let's move Edelgard up. So Edelgard's a big axe-wielding hard nut, even though she looks like a little girl. So you see Smash, it's a super effective combat art, uh, but it costs five weapon durability. She's right, got okay. an iron axe with 45, so I can use it, you know, yeah. so many times. Can't do the math quickly in my head. <laughs> um, so we'll smash this guy out of oblivion. In fact, I, I don't need to, I just need to attack him. So can you mend between fights? Yeah, there's a blacksmith yeah. you will eventually unlock. I think I unlocked it after six hours. Right. Um, but you can buy multiples Extra of weapons, weapons and right. other different types of weapons unlock over the course of the game. So I've got iron, then you go up with steel, then silver. Um, I've got things called leaven swords at the moment, which are like magical lightning swords. Yeah. They're pretty good. <laughs> um, so is it fairly intuitive? It, it makes sense as you play it. The game, I think the game was still tutorializing eight hours in. It doesn't feel as bad as that sounds, but it's definitely... A gradual process. If you play any kind of JRPG, you'll be used to that type of thing. Um, yeah. But you can do all sorts of like you can uh, talk to people if you're next to them, and it sometimes teases a little bit of story out. You can check what items you've got and use them. So like that, uh, what's it called, Volnary, uh, is like a health portion. It becomes less important as the game goes on, and you unlock healing units and things like that. And you can trade items with people who are next to you. So like say you have somebody whose axe breaks, you can then trade them a fresh axe on the battlefield. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, Byleth has got a. He's the only person who can do this. You can access the convoy, so that's your items that you've got in storage. Right. So Byleth can effectively take items out of storage and hand them to other people. Nobody else can do that. You can just wait as well. So I'll tell you what, talking doesn't cost you. Everyone gets to make what kind of one move per turn. Talking doesn't cost a move, but I can talk to Ailguard. You say you're a mercenary, so show me what you can do. I like Ailguard. She's very to the point and businesslike. 
it wouldn't do for us to fall in a place like this. Dimitri is very idealistic and kind of like he, he's like he tries to be like the ideal leader and knight, and he's he's all very goody two shoes. And Claude's just a bit of a like, just a bit of a lad, he just kind of has a good time. The head of the gold. Yeah. We'll advance while protecting ourselves from the enemy. Take up position. So it's teaching about terrain, so like different terrain has different effects, so like you'll see in the top left, forest, okay. um, it reduces, uh, I'm going to say that reduces movement by 30%, but, but it gives you one plus defense, so it makes right. you take less damage, so it's quite handy to have like, so as well, you see if I position Claude there, see the red arc coming from that troop, that means that enemy will go for him in a, on its turn. Okay. So if I position him one back... Is that a definite he'll go for him? Yes, but it can change as you move other units up. Right. The enemy's pretty smart at knowing who to go for and who's weak. Um, I've had enemies dogpile one unit when they know they're going to kill them if they stack like three attacks against it. Okay, that's good. You, you want some? You want a challenge to the, to the game? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's not hard, but the AI is not so stupid that you can just sleepwalk through it. Um, it, it's more easy because your characters are so fucking powerful. Like, some of my guys are unkillable. Um, like, Dimitri in my main file, he just dodges attacks and then counterattacks for instant kills. Like, nobody can kill him. You stick him out on the flank and he destroys the whole enemy army on that flank. So Edelgard's get, getting a bit chipped away, but then she just warps him back. And as characters develop, you can do things like combo points where they'll do multiple attacks per turn, counter-attacks, dodges. So like there, Byleth just did a counter-attack. Yeah. So the, I, I saw the each character there getting, gaining some points and assuming levelling up as they get more points. Do they have to fight to get those uh, points? No, they, they, can, they have to fight to get levels, yeah. They don't have to, the kills get the most points, damage gets some experience, healing and helping people also helps. The combat art. Yeah, so he's basically teaching us combat arts. So like, um, so Claude, let's move Claude up. Let's move him over there, because I think we're going to be moving over that direction eventually anyway. So combat arts, uh, curved shot, it basically lets him fire from a lot further away and also does more damage. And you can kind of see it does 18 attack, uh, 129 hit, it got a 7 crit, and it's got all this other stats and stuff. To be honest, I don't number crunch that stringently. The game, you can if you want, but it's not needed really. Yeah. Um, so let's let's nail this guy. Very good. Oh, he's gone. That's one down. <laughs> and it's just a very typical uh, tactical RPG where they do a little pause after every attack. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a bit of variation on the poses? Yeah, every character has yeah. unique poses um, for the most part. And it also depends what class you spec them as. So at the moment, all these guys will, uh, will be considered nobles. So there's two beginner classes, nobles and commoners depending on what the character's background is, but eventually you will be able to start specking them into like more in-depth classes, and there are a lot. Yeah. There's four different tiers of classes, maybe five off the top of my head, I can't quite remember. Okay, so, so does everyone come to you as a certain class and then you can choose to change it? Yeah, everyone has uh, their own preference of what they start the game as, but you, this game, it, it, more than most Fire Emblems, has, is very good at not restricting you. So like, Edelgard starts off as a frontline axe wielding fighter. You could make her a horse archer eventually okay. with enough dedication. You yeah. don't have to make them stick. So um, she wouldn't necessarily be the best at it, but she could do it. She could get to be the best eventually, but she'll start yeah. at a... Different characters have like... Um, <laughs> there's a lot of systems and I'll show you as I go through, but like different characters have different... Um, talents for things so some yeah. characters will develop uh so like uh, dimitri is very good with spears and he will learn how to use spears more quickly than otherwise i, I think at least that's an example of other type of thing other characters have um i'll tell you what i'm gonna do i'm gonna move oh i can't oh i'll tell you what oh, byleth up because i don't think byleth's really gonna get hurt too badly what am i doing i messed that right up um Hmm. Hmm. So can everyone move and and sh and shoot or move and attack? Pretty much. Yeah. All pretty evenly. And you know what? I'm gonna fall back for a defensive line. And end the turn early. Let the enemy move on me. 
So this guy's a little bit more serious. There you go, and that, that's a, that's a okay. really good. So as well, she's got quite a lot of um, points. Characters have different chances to get different levels of stat growth as well per level. Okay. So two, say two violets at level ten, won't necessarily have the same stats. Okay. Sometimes you only get one stat upgraded. Sometimes you get all of them upgraded. It depends. It's like there's like a roll in the background so that determines. Kind of, yeah. yeah. This is Geralt, he just, I say Geralt to Geralt. Oh, I thought he was just watching from the sidelines. He does join in, and he's a beast. Yeah. Attack when an ally is nearby, and the enemy will be intimidated. So yeah, it's all about kind of strategic placement and things like that. Um, stacks are like Edelgard, if she attacks, she'll be bolstered by all three of them. Didn't really help though. Okay, Claude, you finish him off. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, follow up. Ah, yes. I was wondering if that was on purpose, if that did it every time. <laughs> no, just bad luck. Yeah. There There's, you go, he's only got two. Uh, yeah, so yeah. he's... And it, they actually comment on it, and some of them are like, this is... Basically, you just go, this is shit. <laughs> and other times they'll be like, yeah, I'm really strong now. Right. So this guy is a, a very early game um, bad guy. Or mystical side plots. Killed you, fool. <sighs> well, it's fine. After all, if you don't know the value of your own life, you're not going to protect it very well, are you? Of course not. <laughs> well, then, I guess it's up to me to guide you from now on, right? I'm, I'm not really surface. a fan of, of Sophus. <laughs> also known as the beginning. It's all very mysterious, for mysterious sake. She, so, so the general plot around South is she, she can't remember much about herself, and as you learn things, she starts to remember more and more. Right, okay. Um, it's not that interesting. Uh, I was not able to recall my name until just now. I think it's mainly because she's like this bratty little kid. And she like goes from like being a clueless idiot herself to scolding you. <laughs> so she's a less than likable character. Yeah, I never really liked her. You understand. She's, she's not my favorite character. Violet. Does she mix in with the main story? Nope. Only Violet ever sees her. Only Violet ever talks to her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> and, and this is kind of what Byleth does. That's why he's not that much of an interesting character. He, he right. just kind of signs his way through <laughs> cutscenes. And, and it's a shame because when all the other characters are quite well written and voiced, it's it seems like he sticks out. When time begins, like that's, emo that's as emotional as he gets. Uh, and to be fair, they do reference it in the story. Oh, that's good. But it doesn't make it any more interesting. Yeah. But it's obviously a thing to do, um, to not give your character too much personalisation because it should be you. Yeah, no, that, that is right. I think I would have preferred just to have them as a character though yeah. and not be a cipher for yourself. Especially seeing as they're not necessarily the focus of your playthrough, depending on which faction you choose. So I mean, basically this is just like a, this is explaining a divine pulse mechanic that you've got to, it allows you to turn back time during combat, so you can undo mistakes. Okay, is that purely on the casual mode? No, it's on every mode. It's to soften the blow of permadeath. If you fuck up, right, you can turn okay. back time and try and write it. Do it again. Hey, 
over here. Huh? And yeah, everyone's had a good time. I thought the bandits committed a bit of murder. <laughs> Did you just? The Knights of Seros are here. We'll cut you down for terrorizing our students. Hey, the thieves are running away. Go after them. So the Knights of Seros and the Church of Seros are kind of like the fourth faction. Right, okay. The students seem to be unharmed. And who's this? Uh, why him? So yeah, there's a lot of talking heads. It's not the most like well animated thing in the world, but um, there's a lot of voice acting. Like this has got text on on a biblical level. There's probably like uh, you know, there's probably about forty hours worth of dialogue in this game. Okay, and well, it's all voiced. Probably more if you think of all the factions and the split storylines, and it's all voiced. All characters okay. are completely voiced. That's good. Um, this 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 it's it's impressive. Um, it's it's weird because Fire Emblem has there hasn't been a console one I mentioned before for a long time since the Wii. It's been a DS franchise for a long time. Was popular in Japan in the nineties. Never really made it out here until Smash Brothers popularized it. And this looks very nice on the TV. I think the models look all quite nice, but they're still a little bit pared down for like a console game. Like one of my complaints with uh, Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee was it still felt like a DS game. Yeah slightly prettier and this kind of feels the same i mean so far we've seen a lot of cutscenes. we've seen you on the on the sort of battleground do you also walk around yeah so there's the there's the soap opera part right, okay. so the game is primarily two parts there's the battles and then the soap opera and the soap opera is next um and it's a nice pace change actually there's like it's like the kind of slow rpg style of things it seems very inspired by persona uh, in Persona, it's the same way you have like this soap opera kind of hub. You can walk around, talk to characters, build relationships, and um, do kind of little mini game type things. Develop characters on the side. So I was saying that they, they level up, yeah. but they've also got um, skills in different disciplines like spears, swords, white magic, black magic, riding, flying, and in the soap opera bit around where you, where you, which you'll see next, that's kind of when you can start setting people's priorities, what they should focus on okay. to get better, and that's how you shape characters. You can get them to take exams to, to reclass them into different classes and different focuses. Um, there's an unreal amount of stuff in this game, and as I say, it took me about eight hours to tease it all out. Okay, so you talk about um, improving people's skills. Do you also um, improve relationships, like friends? Yes. And... So in the fight, actually, when you stood characters next to each other and they that's fought, a lot of love hearts. That, yeah. that's their relationships building towards each other. Your skill is beyond question. You're clearly an Is this a choice time? No, not quite yet. <laughs> that would be Geralt, the Bladebreaker, former captain of the Knights of Seros, oft praised as the strongest knight to ever live. Have I missed anything? So again, your, your, your history is shrouded in mystery. You're, you're meant to be Gerald's son, but you know nothing about his past. Um, you, you're a bit of a blank slate. It's all yeah. very mysterious. Of course you are. I'd love to bend your ear as we travel. Oh, I should mention that the three of us are students of the Officers Academy at Garrig Mock Monastery. We were doing some training exercises when those bandits attacked. I definitely got the worst of it. That would be because you ran off. Too true. I was the first to make a strategic retreat. Everything would have worked out if these two hadn't followed me and ruined everything. <laughs> because of them, every single one of those bandits chased after us. Utterly ridiculous. Ah, so that's what you were thinking, Claude. And here I thought you were acting as a decoy for the sake of us all. His intentions were as clear as day. You will prove a lacking ruler if you cannot see the truth behind a person's words. <laughs> You will prove a lacking ruler yourself if you look for deceit behind every word and fail to trust those whom you rely on. So Dimitri and Eilgard are definitely like the straight faction leaders. Yeah. So the, the Golden Deer feel like the odd man out. So the Golden Deer are Claude's faction are the yellow guys. They just... We'll meet them in a second, but they basically just seem like a class of shitheads. But like in a, in a good kind of fun meaning way, not nasty people, but like they're definitely like the dumb kind of comedy characters. Yeah. And I'm not sure if I, they'd get on my nerves. <laughs> I don't think they would because I've got to know some of them just by being in the in the the, the, the soap, soap opera part. 
which is the next part. But um, yeah, it, it's odd. The blue D, uh, blue D, F. Jesus Christ, I'm mixing them all up now. So blue lions here, who I went with, they definitely seem like the most straightforward. They had a nice mix of characters, a few quirky, few a bit straight air, few dark and brooding. Um, Edelgard's faction, the Black Eagles, are a little melodramatic on the surface of things. And then they come there as comedy characters, like daft, stupid characters. That's a broad Brooks brush stroke. Okay. So I think when you get to know them, they actually have a lot of depth. But sure, there's quite a few, say, if you chose yellow, there's quite a few people in there. If you didn't like a particular person, you could just keep them on the bench. Um, not at no. first. You can poach students from other houses, but it takes okay. quite a long time. Where does your allegiance lie? Hmm. It seems one's place of birth is quite significant to them. So yeah, I think you get. To, I think it tells you basically who who you should like. I think you're right. It's a bit of choice time here, but it's not. Um, it doesn't lock you in at this point. So you've got the Empire, which is uh, the Black Eagles, you've got the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, which is the Blue Lions, and then the Lester Alliance. I quite like the Lester Alliance. Is there any they're... way of telling which one's which just by looking at this, or do you have to have listened to uh, them? They, they talk a little bit about it. Okay. Um, but we've been talking we've over been the top talking of it. To. <laughs> um, it's Speaking basically just chosen to... red. Though the Empire has fallen from its former glory, the other regions are merely offshoots that pale in comparison. All right, that's enough with the small talk. It's time to head back to the monastery. Looks like we'll have to pick this up another time. My, my, they are in such a hurry. You know, each of the three is most unique. Which is the most unique? Well, you said Claude. I'm but... just going to go Edelgard. Because, <laughs> and bigger, big her up. I'm going to join the faction. Right, okay. I think you can just, uh, this is just to show you them. So none of these, none of these characters is yes, I thought the same. what they appear at first. Like they're all got a lot of depth to them, very two dimensional, no sorry, Three dimensional, two dimensional women, they're rubbish. Um, they've got a lot of depth in them, they're very interesting. Th layers get peeled back as the story progresses. Um, and what you start off with is not necessarily what you'll end up with. Okay, so they're like onions. Yeah, or cakes, <laughs> or parfaits. There you go, there's your little sprite. Oh, them. shit, it's going really quick. Part one. So this. White. So, so that was the. That's the prologue, right, basically. Okay. So. Three houses. So the the part one. So this is White Clouds part one. Um, it's all set over the a, the a school year at this Garrick Mark uh, Monastery Academy. Okay. As I say, it's where all the great noble houses send their best and brightest to be trained up as officers for the next generation. As they celebrate the dawning year, the people pray that they may realize their full potential, just as a tiny sprout hopes to one day. So we're playing on, on TV, docked mode, obviously, at the moment. Um, I've been playing this mainly in handheld mode. Yeah. It looks great, scales fine. Some of the text is a little small, but not, not too much of it's a problem. Um, not, not on the battles or the menus or anything like that. It's mainly more the fiddly stuff of like inventory management and stuff like that. Um, but this game drains your battery. It drinks your battery. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It... If there is an argument at the moment to upgrading to one of the new switches with the better battery life, it is this game. Right. Because it lasts about three hours on a full battery. Okay, that's not and good. And three hours on this game is like a soap opera piece in a battle. Right, okay. I suppose it's, it's such a huge game with all the voices and... Yeah, I, I'm not surprised it's so big. I, I don't know why it drains it so much because, yeah, there's a lot of characters and stuff, but it's all still very kind of static. It's all menu, a lot of floating heads and talking yeah. heads. Um, the battles are all just like chess pieces on a board. Um, these are all pre-rendered cutscenes. You know, they're like animated. They're not like in engine. Um, perhaps it's the soap opera bits in the monastery that are taxing because sometimes the frame rate dips a little bit. But there's not that much going on other than the fact that it's a big area. It's, it's weird, but yeah, it drains the battery. There must just be loads of systems running under the hood. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it eats a battery. 
So apparently, three hours on a on a regular switch, uh, five on a new generation switch. Okay, that's quite an improvement, actually. Yeah, the new <laughs> new generation switch is looking pretty sweet. <laughs> so was it six hours? So seven hours on Breath of the Wild and the new Switch. Oh, okay. I think, yeah, that used to last me about four. Yeah, so it's almost double on the yeah. new new Switch. And it's not that it's got a bigger battery, it's just got a more efficient uh, processor. So these like the, the central cast. These. So this is your first day at school? Uh, this is where you just get introduced. Uh, yeah, there's oh, some there very... There, yeah. <laughs> she's like the sexy teacher character. Oh, she's a teacher? Yep. She's actually quite a fun character. She's not overly sexualized in the game. That like that's like that's her outfit's the worst part of it. <laughs> she's actually quite like a com she's like a comedy character. Yeah. Um she's like she's always going through men, but they never stick around because she's actually messy as fuck and like a complete disaster as a person. Oh right, okay. So just take the mick out of her as well. A little bit, yeah. But it it doesn't like it doesn't make a caricature as well. She's got it's, she's got like a sad side. The fact that she can't hold on to anybody and like she's a little bit lonely at times. Right. Um, see, the characters are really well written. Like they're all interesting. Oh, I just I didn't notice that. If I think if you tilt your controller, it causes Byleth to run around. See, you'll learn things too. Yeah. Forced to see her now. Uh, you saw her in the courtyard earlier, didn't you? The Archbishop, Lady Rhea. As you know, the majority of folks in Fodlan are devout followers of the teachings of Seros. So I mean, like, Fire Emblem is very anime in all its character designs. Yeah. And when I saw Gerald, I was like, oh, he looks pretty good. And then I saw his uh, shitty little ponytail. I was yeah. like, oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Something spoiled it. Because <laughs> most of these so far have got similar hair and eye colours. I think it's I think it's significant, the, oh, okay. the green hair. I don't know, I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah, light green hair, light green eyes. He's got dark green so hair and eyes. But like your guy... It's got a difference. Like greeny blue. Yeah. That is your child, is it not? Yes. Born many years after I left this place, I wish I could introduce you to the mother of my child, but I'm afraid we lost her to illness. I see. My condolences. As for you, I heard of your valiant efforts from Alois. What is your name? A fine name indeed. Certainly, like the voice acting is really good for the most part. Um, there's a lot of characters. I think it's like I don't know if this is spot on the money, but there's maybe about eight students per house. Oh, okay. Plus extra characters in the monastery. Do we have any recognisable? Uh no, voice I don't think so. I, I, there's no Troy Baker or Nolan North <laughs> or anything like that, and that's probably for the better in yeah. a game like this. I had expected that Alois would have already asked this of you. I must step away for now, but I expect they will desire a word with you soon. But there's definitely a weird um, tipping point in this game, um, where you start off relatively weak and having to be really, really careful in fights, and then after maybe three or four battles, your people start just becoming mega powerful. And I don't know what it is, but it, it, I think it's when you start being able to spec them into proper classes and having a bit more diversity in your army. Oh, okay. I'm afraid your services are requested as well. So yeah, this is it's a bit contrived this plot, but it's just to drive things along. Um, yeah, it's just all to set the scene. Oh no, completely. But like the whole premise is they want they want Gerald to be um, uh, join the rejoin the knights of the church, and oh, I've got a low battery, and. Um, they want you to become professor in the academy. Right. After one battle of like, oh, you were so good in that battle. You must be the new professor. My, how stern and handsome you are. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I'm not the one you're looking for. You can handle things from here. Good luck. And watch out for Lady Rhea. I don't know what she's thinking making you a professor like this. She may be up to something. Stay on your guard. The plot thickens. Yeah, were you not supposed to come in as a student? No. No? Okay. They busy meet your professor, these are the other two professors, and you all take a house each. Right. 
But because you're the new guys, you get it. Because you, you're the new guy, you get to choose. I wonder if you bear a crest of your own. When next you have a moment to spare, I insist that you pay me a visit so we can delve into the subject further. I'm Manuela. I'm a professor, a physician, a songstress, and available. <laughs> to meet you. I'm disappointed it doesn't give me you're available. We're renowned opera company. Perhaps you've heard of me? The Middle Franc Opera Company is beautiful, peerless. Spare our colleague the needless chatter, Manuela. Now then, it seems you'll be taking charge of one of the. Yeah, her character model is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. You haven't yet been briefed on the nature of each, have you? Do you really not know? Fine, I'll do you a favor and explain. The Officers' Academy is comprised of three houses of students, each of which is closely affiliated with its region of origin. The Black Eagle House is for students from the Adrestian Empire. Their house leader this year is Edelgard, the Imperial Princess, who is in line to be the next Emperor. The Blue Lion House is for students from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Their house leader this year is Prince Dimitri. He is to be the next King of Fargus. It is very, um, fortuitous that you've got all, like, the next in line to the throne. Yeah. All of the Academy at once. Claude, grandson to Duke Regan, the leader of the Alliance. I mean, to be fair to Claude, his faction don't promote you automatically. It's like a democracy. Okay. Of, just different well, ways of doing things. democracy may be the wrong word. It's it's a council of nobles with different leaders at different times. I just hope none of those little treasures cause any trouble. Hmm. Quite. For now, I suggest taking a stroll around the academy to get your bearing. The old man right. has a point. Oh, and keep in mind, I suggest you try spending time with the. I'm sure okay, Lady Rhea will have more this. information for you. So basically, this is go out meet the students. Changing your mind, Rhea. Appointing a stranger, a child no less, as a professor at our esteemed academy is... I have made my decision, Sedith. I know worrying comes naturally to you, but there is truly no need. That stranger is Geralt's flesh and blood, after all. I can't say that's all too comforting. How trustworthy is this Geralt character? Is he not the man who went missing after the Great Fire 21 years ago? I would remind you that Flame is now here with us as well. I beg of you, please consider whether this is an unnecessary risk. Sadith, they have my trust. Let that be enough for you as well. More importantly, I have received a report from Shamir. I am increasingly concerned about a matter regarding our suspicious individual. We cannot ignore those who harbor ill will toward the church, especially if they are frequenting Garrick Mach. So there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff getting laid on here. There's a story with the church, a story with each faction. Um, yeah, it's it's broad. So they, these two characters are characters I I don't think I particularly like. Is in like their personalities, but they they're still actually pretty interesting characters, especially as the game unfolds. Yeah. Oh, there you go. yeah, you can tilt. I don't know. You can you tilt your controller, make them, and then you can make them jump. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Look at that. It's a little game in itself. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, she could just access that at any time. <laughs> I didn't even know that was a thing. I've just obviously never put the two and two together. Like You probably haven't. I've seen them run across, but it's obviously when I've been in handheld mode and just like yeah. been sitting at an angle. And then other times you would stay in the corner and I never knew why. So I will say these animated cutscenes are very front loaded. There's there's still plenty throughout the game, but nowhere near as many of this in quick concentration. Right, okay. So are you still pretty much in tutorial mode at this point? Oh yes, for yeah. another seven hours yet. Okay. <laughs> Not quite that bad. This is still very much introductory. So this is all the golden day of people. Ah, uh, this is the, the the black eagles.
I really like Petra, who's the girl there. Dorothy is pretty cool as well. It's just like Hogwarts. <laughs> yeah, it is. These are all the blue lion. See, these are a bit more of a serious character, like faction, role to business. This feels like the introduction to like a 90s like show, like Hercules. It is more like a TV show. Do you remember Hercules' Legendary Journeys? No. With Kevin Sorbo? I don't know who that is. Oh, it's Hercules. <laughs> uh, right, so this is oh, okay. the soap opera bit. So, so this about is... 45 minutes in. Yep. <laughs> uh, this is the second half of the game. So basically, you can walk around the uh, monastery and it opens up like all the areas yeah. that are in. It will open up eventually. Um, so do you, I guess you always control Byleth? Yeah, you always walk around right. as Byleth, uh, and you go around and talk to people, people give you quests. So let's just skip through some of this. So a few quests, speak to their faction leaders, and there we go. Um, and then people have like, speech bubbles above your head, you can talk to them. I imagine you were a bit surprised that I recommended you as a professor here. Frankly, we had someone else in mind for the role, but... They ran off during our dust-up with the bandits. Can't entrust students to someone who- You saved the lives of the students you can- Now you should make the rounds. Go around the monastery. Yeah, so basically that's like the kind of gist of it. Yeah, but it's it's a pretty big area and something, right, I didn't know for ages, but if you hold B, you can sprint and it saves a lot oh, of time. Oh no, how many hours did that take? About three. <laughs> I probably could have shaved an hour off it though. Uh, yeah, so you got mini map. If you tap um, the uh, the R -Z 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 -R button, you can change how zoomed it is as well, which is quite okay, useful. Yeah, that's good. Um, so it's generally just populated with random people, but then you've got your named characters as well. So it does feel quite alive. There's a lot going on. Like there's Edelgard, so I'll have to go and talk to her. And she can introduce me to all the different uh, characters in her area. So you've accepted a teaching position here. Pity. I was hoping you would lend your strength to the Empire. I never properly introduced myself, did I? My name is Edelgard von Hressbalk. I am the princess and heir apparent of the address. Hey, Hressbalk. Yeah. I wonder if you'll be so I assume that's probably something. something. To do with it. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet everyone. Would you like to know more about any of the Black Eagles? Yes. So you can kind of see a few of their stats and stuff. Well, some think I'm a bit distant, arrogant even. But there's little to be done. One day I must rise to become Adrestia's next emperor. What else? Uh, right, okay, so this is where you start seeing the stats. So, like, you see what level she is, what her class is. It's set to noble at the moment, which is her base class, all her base stats. Yeah. Um, what her strengths and weaknesses are. So, she's good with swords, axes, leadership, and heavy armor. Um, and she's bad with a bow, and I'm gonna say that's like, white magic. Yeah, I would have expected healing or some sort of. Yeah, she's not good at healing, um, so that's kind of her. You can get an you idea. Make her a healing archer. Yeah, you could. I, I mean, you could. Me since I was a child, you may think his blood runs a bit cold, but <laughs> actually, that's rather accurate. So yeah, this guy. You'll see, he's quite astute and. It's more of like a magey type character. So he's good with the bow, but he's also good with uh, black magic and leadership. So leadership um, is, is a weird one. It, it lets you command like better troops and stuff like that, better quality troops. Yeah. Um, and gain access to certain buffs and that. So and everyone has a defining ability. So he, uh, I'm going to say that's Grant 5 Might, I'm going to say, with Gambits. Um, which means they do better. So he's, he's kind of like a magical battlefield general type. So on the top left, he's got a boot next to Noble. So Noble is, uh, the boot is, he is on foot. Right, okay, so he could be on horse. Horse or flight. Oh, okay. You can fly. Uh, yeah, you get Pegasus Knights, which ride on Pegasuses. Oh, nice. And Wyverns, little dragons. Oh, have you come across any? Yeah, I've got a Wyvern rider. Oh, that's He's good. bigger. They, they, so Pegasus Knights use spears. And generally strong against mages, so like I use them as mage hunters. And wyvern riders are more like heavy hit and axe units that can travel in and out quickly and like act as shock troops. Um, but yeah, you can go through all the characters. I really like Petra. 
she's from a foreign land and she has really bad like English skills and her one of her like stories is that she's learning the language and keeps getting phrases wrong. <laughs> but she's a really good swordsman. She's incredibly smart and studious. Um she's excellent. Like I, if you make her a swords master in the long term, she's lethal. Okay. Um, Dorothea is weird. Bernadette is like an archer. She's a bit of an annoying character. I mean, she's like an introvert. Some people think she's adorable. I think she's frustrating. I suppose you could say she's a bit eccentric, but she seems like a gentle soul. I believe she shut herself away in her quarters. And so it takes about six months for you to coax her out of her room. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I mean, she'll turn up the fights and stuff, but in the story mode, she's always in her room. Right. And you got to talk to her repeatedly through the crack in the door in order to. Uh, um, kind of start coaxing her out and seeing her around the monastery. So this is kind of the classrooms and stuff. Um, each each faction has a room. So there's the blue one. There's the black eagles. Uh, so what do we got? There's Claude. So he'll teach us a little bit about the yellow deer. I'm from the room. I'm guessing you don't know which class. Have you met the folks from the Golden Deer House? Uh, right, so you can tell, so you've got like Lorenz, who's like he's a he's bit of a fop. <laughs> um, he's always wearing he always wears a rose in his lapel. That said, deep down, he's really devoted and honest. He's um yeah, he's like a he's like a cavalryman. He's good at spear and horseback with a little okay. bit of black magic. So like so. A joust. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty useful. Horses are really useful because it lets yeah. you travel a long way. Raphael, I do like this guy. He's just a big dumb muscle head. Seems like he's had a rough All he does is eat and lift weights. And he's just like <laughs> he's just like a big dumb guy. He's really fun and friendly, and I like the fact that his shirt's about to burst. Uh, it's just fucking stupid. <laughs> it's also a commoner. Yeah, so some yeah. like so the Leicester Alliance because it's more like a mixed currency kind of um, faction. There's a lot more commoners than the nobles. Um, it's a, it, there's like maybe one or two commoners per other faction, whereas there's about half and half for the Leicester Alliance. Um, two else have got Ignaz, he's a bit of a bookwormy type. Lysithia, Lyst uh, I'm gonna say, if that's how you pronounce that. Um, she's younger than all the other characters and she has a real chip on her shoulder about it, the fact that people treat her as a kid. Um, she is fucking lethal. So she, she's a healer. She she's better off as a black mage. Oh, okay. She's absolutely devastating. Um, she just has like it, it's. I think it's a hidden stat, but she's got um just really really high combo points. So if you tell her to blow, blow a fireball at somebody, she'll throw about five at them before. It, well, she'll throw fireballs until they die in a single turn. Right. She's a lethal little thing. She's she's really really good. Uh, Marianne, she's a bit of a shut-in. Hilda's a bit of an airhead. Uh, Leone, she's she seems okay. She's a bit of like a warrior cavalry person. I think she said that her father is a hunter. She's pretty blunt and she's another commoner. So she's got no weaknesses. But she also might not have many many strengths. Great strengths. So okay. she might have mediocre strengths in other ones. But uh, what has she got? If a male, so her ability is if a male ally is adjacent, unit deals two extra damage and takes two less damage. So basically, she she puts herself out to be better than the men. Oh, okay. So pair her up with another man, and she'll and she'll, do good. she'll be better. Yeah. Um. So yeah, they all seem a little bit more quirky. Like Hilda's kind of like an airhead valley girl type. She's always about shopping and stuff like that. <laughs> It seems her father and brother cuddle her. I think she's a bit of a spoiled brat. Look up lazy in the dictionary. Her picture won't be there because she never got around to submitting. Ah, so pair her up with guys and they do better. Ah, uh -huh. okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know much about her. When I've fought her in campaigns as the Blue Lions, because you have like practice battles against each other, my little battery's uh, kicking in again. Um, she seems to be like a barbarian, axe wielding kind of fighter. Uh, although again, you can make her whatever you wanted to be, um, but you can go and you can go and talk to people and stuff like that. So, uh, so there's Marianne, who I didn't show you, but she's a bit of like a nervous kind. So that's Hilda the Airhead. She's very quietly soft-spoken and yeah, quite gentle. Yeah, meek. Yeah, she's definitely meek. Maybe meek to a fault. Sometimes it's a little bit irritating. Um, and then Dimitri, and I know these guys very well because I've spent about 30 hours with them now. 
Let's see what we do this. So how far are we uh, away from an exit battle? Um, probably uh, quite a while just to get all the rest of this okay. stuff out. But um, what I'll do is once we kind of get through this, I'll jump to my save file. Um, yeah, so these are the cards I'm used to. So I would like to do. There's like a whole race plot around to do, like racism and stuff. Because uh, there's a there's a whole plot about he's from Duska, like Dimitri just said, and there's a whole plot around what something happened in Duska, and now they're treated as outcasts. But it's basically like a race hate plot line and how to do copes with it. Um, he's a bit of a blank slate to do. He's very stern and, and business like, but I quite liked him. Um, he looks a lot older than the other ones. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so Sylvain. So, so when I first met him, he's basically a womanizer. Right. He just chases girls and he's a bit of a, bit of a dick. Um I speak with him about it often, but it doesn't seem to help. The thing is, again, these characters are pretty deep, but when you actually get to know him, he's really good. He's really interesting and there's a lot more to him. Uh, it's 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 cool. It's, there's a lot, a lot going on. Uh, Mercedes. Uh, so I, I would say she's called Mercedes, but yeah. they pronounce it like Mercedes, and it really annoys me because um, it's not. It's Mercedes. Um, there, Mercedes is like my healer, and that's like my mage. Ingrid is my Pegasus Knight. Shh, Ingrid is a fucking beast. She is also a childhood friend. Ah, so horse and flight. So yeah, she started off uh, with a spear and then I upgraded her to a cavalry unit with a spear and then eventually a Pegasus Knight. Right. And she is bred for a, um, a, being a Pegasus Knight. She's unbelievable. Um, she's she's just powerful as hell. She's my mage killer on my main sail file. Cool. Uh, so yeah, let's return our area and then we get to select our house. And then it should throw us into the calendar, I think. I'm just going to quickly skip through some of this. So basically you get to choose your faction. So again, you can kind of cycle through and it shows you who's in. As I see, you can port kids from other classes. It's not the end of the world. Um, but I think I'm going to make this my Black Eagle playthrough because they seem like a really interesting faction. Why not? Your heart has made its choice then. All I They are all brother? I am in the middle of something, Flame. Is it urgent? No, no, it's nothing. This is our newest prof Oh my! A new addition to the Officers Academy. I am Sedith's little sister, Flame. I am so happy to make your acquaintance. Let us focus on the top in a few days. So yeah, there's there's a whole other plot line around that character as well. <laughs> oh god. So now we get to meet the gang. Wait, so our new professor is you? I didn't see that one coming. Easy, Caspar. Aren't you being a bit rude? You know it's a waste of time to expect politeness from him. It will be a pleasure learning from you, Professor. So, Linhart's uh, whole thing is he just sleeps. He's actually got a... <laughs> <laughs> don't look at me like that! Oh, and please don't talk to me too much either. <sighs> I'm sorry for the chaos you've walked into. I hear we are rather close in age, Professor. I hope you do not mind... So a bit of a dick. He's son to the Prime Minister of the Empire, and he thinks he's a real big shot. Right. But I think he's a bit of a fop. <laughs> I don't know a lot of these characters that well. Um, I tried to poach a few of them, and it didn't always work out. You have a gut, Professor. I will take great joy from your teachings. I really like Petra, but I could never poach her. She's very loyal with Black Eagles. That's a bit Is it a okay, case so that you could if you sort of uh, tried a bit more? Yeah, so time? different different students have different preferences. So like, she wants you to be really good with a sword uh, and other things, and like d basically you have to be high in the skills that these people like in order to coax them over, as well as develop a relationship with them. Yeah, I may be the imperial princess, but here at the academy, I'm just another student. That said, know that I have high expectations. But um, yeah, you know the characters are fun. Um, Caspar, the little uh, blue Mohawk kid, yeah. he just seems like a real scrappy little thing. He's always wanting to fight and stuff. He's got small man syndrome. 
custom I have missed in my studies? Not real ice, just the ice of... Um, well, it just means let's get to know each other. I don't want to train. Let's stay in the classroom and learn from a book. Let's all calm down and have a nice cup of tea, how about? Doesn't that sound lovely, Professor? I know we all agree to treat each other as equals, but there is a limit to what I can tolerate. The esteemed Black Eagle House requires order. Jeez, just a bit of a dick. <laughs> I got like Dorothy as well. She's alright. Looks like your first job will be to quiet down this racket. I don't envy you. Hubert's a weird character. He seems very different to a lot of the other students in that I could barely interact with him as a blue lion. He looks pretty evil. I wonder if he is. <laughs> I don't really know, <laughs> um, but like there's bit, most most of the students, you can say like you can talk to them, give them gifts, try to recruit them. He just used to give you like one word answers. Hey, he's back, he's back, um, and like cut you off and not let you talk to him properly. So uh, I don't know whether he's fixed to the Red Black Eagles in a story point of view. Okay. Who knows? I'm sure somebody does out there. The game's been out three weeks. Someone should. So you should be able to push any of the ones from the houses? More or less. And there's a few other kind of um, freelance characters who you can coach as well. So this is the cal calendar I mentioned before. So the game, the, at least the first half of the game, takes place over a calendar year. Uh, and you're on basically a school schedule. So you get paid your salary uh, for being a professor every month. And um, you, you, you can level up. Your pro you've got a professor level, which uh, that dictates how many points you get to do activities in the soap opera parts around the monastery. Okay. And you get paid more per month the higher professor level. Um, so this is like so this is talking about crests, which are like um, yeah, basically the things people are born with, they're like marks on you that give you powers. And this guy studies them, that's his academic field, and he wants to test whether I've got one. So it's not something you can give to someone else? Uh, no, most people are born. There's a lot, like, like a lot of plot threads around noble houses marrying into each other to try and inherit crests. Like some noble houses don't let you inherit the like the, the head of the family position if um, you don't have a crest. Uh, so it's not a physical object. It's like I don't know whether it's something that's tattooed on your skin or whether okay. it's just something in your blood, but it's they just call them crests and they create like symbols. So this guy puts your hand in a scanner and a symbol pops up. This a pattern I've never seen before. To think there are still crests are very important to the story, but they're quite abstract in what they are. For, for the sake of gameplay, they are buffs on a character. Oh, okay. Hmm. What in the world? Not everyone has one. Um, those who do get nice little buffs. And it plays into the story. Right, ah, so, so that's just jumped forward another day. Yeah, so it plays through. So this is the first of your standard. Uh, yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, when you get into the game, explorers wander around the monastery talking to people. Seminar is a skill up in certain fields for certain characters. Battle is go out in the field and battle. Rest is ignore the day away, but lets your characters kind of regenerate. Yeah. Um, and increase their motivation levels, which helps them learn faster down the line. So explore is all we've got at the moment. So this is my room and all the rest of it. So this is where you hang out. Uh, and this is basically where you can kind of just go around and talk to people um, and just do little activities. So you've got like characters. I'm not going to, I'm going to quickly skip through this bit, but just show you some things you can do. Um, I think it's just show me new areas. Very nice. <laughs> Is that better? Oh, there's lots of cats. Look at that thing. Oh, look, he's falling asleep. It's like Linhart. <laughs> ah, that's Leone. Um, that's Sylvain. He's probably trying to molest some girl. That's just makes him really, really <laughs> male malevolent. He, 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 it's more like he romances than dumps them. Right. He's a he's a master of the hump and dump. As <laughs> <laughs> hard as yawning his head off. Uh, what what you can do is um, oh shit, you can garden, so you can plant seeds and harvest them. Uh, there's like a little fishing mini game you can do. Uh, oh, how's the fishing in this game? It's all right actually. It's not too bad. Um, can I unlock? 
Yeah. Son of a bitch. Um, I speak with your house leader. Where the hell is she? I think she was right outside my dormitory. I mean, this is this is kind of the soap opera part. You go around talking to people. You can get side missions. Uh, talk to the nine stuff for details. Ah, so okay, I've probably made a rod from my own back here. So he's unlocked the food activities for me. I wonder if the people up here can unlock the fishing and stuff. So Dimitri, uh, sorry, to do. Yeah, so Tadu is actually a big uh, gardener. <laughs> oh, okay. He's unlocked the uh, side of things. There's a few side quests, the unlock things. Yeah, so there's little activities you can do. Oh, uh, there's a Pegasus in there. Oh, what's that? Yeah, near the windmill. Uh, let's see the... Keep going, keep going. Uh, oh, there, yeah, 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 so they patrol the skies. You might see a wyvern, big brown, black dragon thing. So, they go to the dining hall, we can do things. So there. <laughs> <laughs> He's always eating. He said that guy likes to eat. Uh, what's Flynn want? Oh, Flynn likes fishing. I call you that, but I am afraid I am not a student here myself. My brother would not be. The monastery is kind enough to provide... Might you help me with a there we go, so she's teaching us the fish. So yeah, this is where you can do the foody stuff. So you can share a meal with people. Um, so as you see, that one that's appeared at the top, that's my um, professor points. That's the like activities I can do as well. So you can do today's special. So first, it's the ones with blue arrows going up. It's They really like the meal that's on special here. So I can do Hedelgard and... Let's see Dorothea. So that's the only activity I can do today. Okay. But it'll build relationship with me and them, and them between each other. Right. Okay. It's been a while, so I'm not sure. And the motivation increases, so they learn more efficiently now. And my professor level's just gone up. <laughs> now I'm E plus. E plus. Yeah, you start off as E. E okay. plus goes up to S plus. <laughs> of course oh, it does. Yeah, <laughs> Japanese, of course it does. Uh, so you can also... Let's have a run down here quickly. Uh, fish. Oh. And the fishing's not too bad, if I'm honest. It's pretty easy. It's like a rhythm game, actually. Hey. Hey. Hey, that's a, it's normally a lot harder than that. That's very much the intro one. And what else can you do? Gardening. I tried to do that before. It didn't work out too well. Uh, yes, I do. So I can plant to do... So you can plant things to do seeds. Um, but you can cultivate them as well to make them grow more efficiently, get better results. And then next next turn here, I'll be able back. to harvest them. Right. Uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's quite a bit going on in the monastery, so you can like, talk to different people. The great tree moon is the best time of the year for naps. I could just forget all about my assignment. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what you can do. You, you unlock other activities, like this choir practice you can do. Um, there's, there's, there's quite a lot going on, really. But they're all, they, basically they're all designed to increase stats and things like that, to increase bonds, uh, other bits and pieces. I'm just trying to think. It might take too long to get there, just for the sake of a quick look. Uh, ooh, you can zoom in as well. Um, what I'll do is I'll save it. So that gives you kind of a rough idea of where things are at as well. You notice that I've got my house faction oh, symbol yeah, there now yeah. as well. Uh, what I'll do is I'll cut and load in my main save file, show battle off with my more diversified units, and it might give a, give you a, a bit more of an idea what the combat eventually turns into. But the soap opera bit is basically this. The plot progresses by talking to people, doing little side quests, 
Um, you find lost items around the place, and you've got it. They're, they're always got cryptic descriptions, and you've got to learn about people to understand what they're like, and then you'll understand what item belongs to what person. Uh, it's not always as clear cut as I'd like it, but it's it's fine as Dorothea. How are you doing? If you're not busy, would you like to join me on a little trip into town? If I'm cooped up in this dusty old monastery, did you say invite professors out to go into town with you? No, <laughs> <laughs> I can see why it's such a a long game. Because I imagine you'd want to speak to everyone. Yes, I've tried to, and I've never skipped over as well. Even though not all the plot points are that interesting, um, most of them are. Most of them are pretty good. Most characters have got something going on. Uh, it's there's, there's a lot of interesting stuff happening. Um, so I'll jump to my save file, but here be warned, spoilers from here on out. And... This is just a fight. Um, I can't remember what one it is, but actually, yeah, I've done this one, but it's it's quite a good. Uh, so in terms of units, um, I've got a lot of people who are all grown up now. So you can just redo fights as you please. Uh, I've saved this file specially to do this this spotlight okay. video. I've already done this mission. I'm about two missions ahead of it in my main file or a mission ahead of it. So Byleth now uh, has gone super sane and has well, it's, it seems green <laughs> on that, but it, it looked blonde yeah. when I was doing handheld. So this is, these are all the people that you've currently recruited. So these are my blue lions. So Dimitri uh, looking a bit worse for wear as an adult. Yeah. Um, is now an adult. Uh, there's Mercedes. She's got short hair now. Felix uh, is shorter hair as well. Lysithia has now got little pigtail braid things. Was that the younger? Uh, yeah, that was the one who's got a chip on her shoulder. Yeah. Um, Gilbert is a knight that you recruit later on in the campaign. He's my heavy tank. Ingrid is my Pegasus knight, my mage assassin. Uh, Shamir is my um, sniper, archer, scout type character. She's She's awesome. Ash is the lovable young orphan boy. Uh, he's now my assassin. He's a cold blooded killer. So just to go over some of the icons, uh, the green crosses, are they the ones that are in your party? Yes, yeah, so the they're the ones I've got equipped. Um, the ones down here, people I've got on the bench. Um, oh, okay, so you got the teacher. Yeah, I recruit Manuela. Um, I never really use her because uh -huh. I've already got better healers, but she was very easy to recruit. All you do is flirt with her. <laughs> Uh, Flame joins your party as a matter of course. I think I'm training it to be a Pegasus Knight. Um, so the ones with the swords next to them, they're not units, but I've got them accompanying other units. So like Dorothea is accompanying Byleth as a support unit. Okay. And that's uh, Annette's cover uh, accompanying uh, uh, Lysithia. I've got Seteth on the bench because I don't really like them. Uh, and Catherine is a beast. But I've got her on the bench because I've got Felix as my swordmaster and he's a monster. Uh, and Cyril is my wide rider. And as you can see, like their inventory, they've got a lot more types of weapons, uh, items, things that give them stat boosts. There's a lot going on here. Um, also, you'll notice as well, what have I got? Uh, inventory. So, uh, each character has abilities. So you can equip uh, five abilities and you unlock different ones as you become better in certain areas and you can basically spec out your character to be better at some things, worse at others. So you set them before the fight? Or yes. No, you can't. This is basically what they're taking into to battle, basically. Um, is there anything else? Uh, let me try there so you can see what it looks like. Double experience for battalions. Uh, I'll leave it at that, but like basically there's there's a lot of people who've got a lot of different abilities. Some people, it depends on what you've trained them in. So Demiri's got a lot, Felix has got a fair amount. Um, so it might be a case of like how long's a piece of string, but how long do fights last? Um, it depends on the mission. Some are bigger than others. Um, it, it really is. Some are like five minutes. If you're quick, others are an hour. Hopefully this isn't an hour <laughs> one. Um, but yeah, in combat arts, as you get more proficient with different weapons, you learn different combat arts. So they, I've got three sword ones equipped, yeah. but I've got a, 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 um, an axe and a spear one in reserve. Um, I think Demetri's got quite a few. Uh, yeah, so she's got some in with a spear, but I don't mainly give her a spear. So yeah, there's, there's a lot going on. Battalions are units of soldiers. She hasn't got one at the moment, I've got any spare that I can give her.
Why not? So they are like one uh, limited use. So you can't. I don't think he's got enough authority to command troops. Oh, so that's when being a good at leadership. Yeah, that's what it plays into. Basically, the more the more authoritative you are, um, the more interest in your um, battalions can be. So reclassing it. Um, I mentioned there's a lot of classes here. So some of my characters have, sh- have taken. Um, Exams in certain classes, so for example, uh, so Felix starts off as a noble, I then made him a, I'm going to say mercenary, no sorry, he then went to a Myrmidon, which is like a swords user, then a mercenary, which is a strong, speedy mercenary uh, with a sword, and now he's a sword master. Um, What else have we got? So Shamir went from like, Commoner, I'm going to say, to fighter, to archer, to sniper, and so they're all follow on from the same sort of weapon tree. Yeah, it's, so basically, you can you can get people to do different exams based on what they're good with. So um, I train Sylvain uh, in t- what was he a noble, and then I train him with a spear, and then moved him on to being a cavalier. So you train him in horses as well. And eventually he became a paladin, which is a better version of that again. So once you get to that level, can you change where you want him to be? Would he start again? In yeah, the you, can, you, you don't have to. They don't lin- linear, uh, linearly. linearly. <laughs> I can't pronounce that word tonight, Jesus. Uh, they don't follow on from each other. Okay. You, you just have to be good in the skills that that class requires. Um, so at the moment, I'm trying to train Ingrid up to be a... So she's a Pegasus knight. There's something called a Falcon Knight, I'm going to say, but I need her to be better in swords before she gets qualified to do that because right. at the moment she's only good with spears and flying. A lot of classes. Yeah. A lot of classes. Um, tons, in fact. Uh, but if we go into this... Uh, actually, one second. So what you can do is look on the map as well and strategically position these things. So I've got Mercedes, uh, who's my healer, Sylvain, who's fast, uh, Byleth on here. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to move Mercedes into my main body so where she can support people more effectively. Uh, I'm going to move him one forward because he's slow and heavily armoured. Can I move Byleth? I'm going to say no, I can't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave him there. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to move her there and move him there. Are you just placing people on top of each other? No, I'm switching them. Right, great. So they can, you can start them in limited positions, but um, I'll tell you what as well. So this is kind of what we're up against. A lot, a lot of shit. A lot of shit in this mission, Jesus Christ. Can you Christ. zoom out at this point? Uh, you can actually, and this is one thing that I've never really messed with, it, but you can... So that's like wider than this tactical view. Oh yeah, that's good. Uh, but what's even cooler... Is it going to let me do it, or is it only going to do it in the battle? Okay, so when you, I'll start the fight, and when you start the fight, you can zoom in even closer down to the individual character. Okay. And play the game from entirely from like a on the ground perspective. The Knights of Seros are a powerful I would not recommend it because <laughs> it'll get very confusing. Uh, I'm just gonna skip through the dialogue. Uh, so basically, I've got to stop the enemy getting to these red spots while I've got to then push them back and destroy their leader. So yeah, so there's Byleth and his guys, and you can see the guys behind him, which I thought was pretty good. So is that just a random assortment of troops? Uh, they're the unit I've got assigned to him at the moment, and there's okay. Dorothea sitting with him as well, because she's his support. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got literally down to the character, and uh, Byleth is now an enlightened one class. Okay. Because uh, that's his special blonde hair moment. So uh, what I can do is let's move... Ah, uh, shit, okay. Let's get Byleth to just bitch slap this guy. <laughs> Byleth is ridiculously powerful. <laughs> Dodge. I know you got counter attack. And he's gone. <laughs> okay, that was yeah, that was powerful. He will make a mockery of most people. <laughs> I've seen like mages rain fire down upon every square mile around him, and he just shrugs it off as if it's nothing. And that was a hell of a level up. Pretty much yeah. everything level up. Um, so now that should clear the way for 
Ooh, what, what have we got in reverse? Ah, so we've got an archer. So what we probably want to do is push Sylvain. Ah, no, okay. Let's push Sylvain down there. So Lance of Ruin is Sylvain's special unique weapon. You can only get that by... Oh, you fucker. <laughs> 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 Sylvain's pretty powerful as well. So you can see I like A plus A in riding. Yeah. I'm getting relatively powerful now. Okay, so Sylvain did not work out as well as I'd hoped, but he didn't get any damage taken either, so I'm not too bothered. So let's... What gambit she got? Let's... Sh I, I'll not... I'll show, I will show off a gambit, but not quite yet. Yeah, Ingrid's a beast. My duty is your death. She will combo until either she or the enemy dies. She never stops until one of them's dead. Oh, really? It, that's what it feels like. If I move her to the left, now Sylvain becomes the target of that archer. Has he got more health? In, well, because she's a flyer, she's far more susceptible to uh, arrows. Right, okay. Uh, right, okay, so... Um, I'm going to bet that Dimitri destroys this cavalry unit. Too weak for this world. Yep, he's uh he's a bit of a monster as well. So how much fun are you having with the game? It's really good. <laughs> it's it's I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open this up. It's there's just a lot going on, it's very tactical. The fact that there's like this kind of dramatic layer of character development over the top of everything as well just makes everything a little bit more personal, a little bit more high stakes. Uh, let's get a curved shot on... Ah, shit, okay, she can't. Okay, can I move her there? No. Okay, let's just move her there and let's open up that. Now I sit here, can move in. She looks like she's been targeted by a lot of people. Oh, yeah, she is, isn't she? So. Let's go. This might be a mistake. So he's a wagon rider. Yeah, so he basically is my heavy hitting, fast moving shock trooper. He'll go in quickly and get out quickly. Hits with a giant axe, then fucks off. <laughs> Can you go on top of the building? Yeah, you can as the flying units. I don't want to, though, because there's a mage there targeting them. <laughs> what I will do... Move them set of stone. Fortify her. Let's wipe out this Pegasus. Straight down. That was pretty good. Yep. <laughs> That's just really Is good. Is that usually like a normal attack? That was my combat art. Right. So it's pretty powerful. So I feel like I'm going to take a big hit here. Ooh, fuck me, that hurt. <laughs> that, that was almost like a free attack, you didn't have to do that. Yeah, <laughs> I love my characters in mech. I mean, I suppose it's probably balanced for the fact that these characters die permanently. Yeah. So they've got to be tough. But no, pretty good, I'm happy with that. Now the Pegasus Knight will come in for a, a pop, but she picked Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> So Gilbert's an armor knight, uh, or he might even be a fortress knight. Um, so that basically means he's immune to physical damage. 
<laughs> Seems like most of them are. I mean, the thing is, they will be whittled down over time. So it's not yeah, it's, it seems like there's more. <laughs> seems like there's more Emmys than. Oh, than, way more. Than In fact, do. there's a you can find out somewhere. Um, oh dear. Oh, nice one, Cyril. See, wagon riders are uh, hit hard, have great, great mobility, but they're also weak to everything. They've okay. got like high vulnerability. So they they'll constantly summon in reinforced Pegasus Knights if I don't stop them. So he's a friendly unit. So How do you stop them? Uh, Defeat all the Pegasus Knights. Um, kill the leader. I think's the um, main objective. So they've got. Oh, what, are we doing? what are we doing? Oh, nice. They've got an item that heals them every turn. So this guy here, uh, Randolph. I, if I kill him, we win. Um, but they've got things coming up the flank as well, so I've got to have like a contingency of people down here to stop that from happening. So let's send Byleth down. Why waste my killing edge? Why not just use my silver sword? It's going to be untouchable anyway. <laughs> uh, we've got Sylvain. Oh shit, one. Okay, one. No, Sylvain needs more leveling up. Let's flank him around the back so he's got less to travel next time. So archers are weak when you get up close. They go down pretty easy. Yeah, that was pretty quick. Ah, uh, and traveling a bit further south. Is there anything on the floor there, the purple swirls? Yeah, so there. that's an online component actually. Um. Hmm. So if you put a unit on there, it's where uh, somebody else's unit died. And if you put a unit on there, they'll pick up bonus items. Right. So that's my right flank done. Okay, let's let's clear some of these bastards off the board, shall we? Right, Lysithia, earn your keep. She's a beast. She's just like this little deadly thing. Uh, right. Bash him. I fight for Lady Rhea. And okay, I'm going to move Ash forward, and then I'm going to have him fire backwards. I'm still here. Move the mutiny forward because he is untouchable anyway. Let's move her forward. Let's have him kill that mage. Chami is really deadly. She tends to combo as well. So if she doesn't kill him with the first shot, she'll usually finish Keep them going. off. So she's not she doesn't belong to any of the houses either. She's a church mercenary. Oh, okay. I didn't think I recognised her from uh, I recruited her. And Cyril is also a church mercenary that I recruited. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's assist. Let's do Physic. Where's Lysithia? So Lysithia is a real glass cannon. She can't take a punch, but my god, she can dish them out. Uh, what else have we got? So Felix is getting a bit far behind actually for my leg, and so I'm going to move him down the flank here. I need him up front, and Gilbert can continue trudging down slowly. Pegasus Knights. So generally speaking, these guys will hold formation until we attack them. Oh, that does so much damage. To her. Watch the meet me block. Oh, he dodged instead. 
<laughs> I don't know why they bother. So what's yeah. this? What? Uh, why are you fighting here, Kira? Uh, they are invading um, the area my guys are holding. They've come to kill us, basically, and we're just holding out against them. Okay. They're like the, the advanced force. Then we're healing. Let's get her fucking down there. Trouble is, Sylvian's slowed down by the trees. Cavalry units are really slowed down by like broken ground. That's weird. Even though he can shoot at us, I need to push Sylvian down the flank. So Shamir, let's go. Let's just attack. One shot. The trouble with Armour Knight, so like, Gilbert is immune to physical damage basically, but my god he's slow. Okay, let's let's hide Ash in the... Oh god, that's, that's maybe too many. Let's hide Ash in the... F Ash can handle a cavalry. He might not be able to handle a mage though. Uh, Dimitri can just march forward and tank everything. Let's get Felix down the wing. Let's get Mercedes up in reserve. Let's get Lysithia pushing down to help Gilbert. And Cyril can just... exist. Let's see what happens here. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Beautiful. Go on, Felix. So she's a Falcon Knight. They're the upgraded Pegasus Knights. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Cyril's pretty good. He doesn't take a lot of damage. Just as well, because if he does get hit, he's not the best. <laughs> yeah, when he does take damage. I think I've seen a lot of them miss. Yeah, a lot of my characters have got really high evasion. Is it the same though? Like, do you struggle sometimes with hitting the enemy? Sometimes, nowhere near as much as they struggle with me. I mean, Jesus Christ, Dimitri's not been touched all much. Like, he might as well just walk through and stab them all. <laughs> That's twice in a single turn. Alright, third time lucky. <laughs> but then he returns like twice the damage. Ah, oh, and a follow up crit. <laughs> Is that like a flourish or something? It's like a critical hit. Right. Um, yeah, not much you could really do about battalion that. Battalion level up. You what? You got a, a battalion oh, level Oh, sorry, up. I think you said Italian. I was like, what? No, no, it's a <laughs> battalion. Uh, let's get rid of the rusted sword. <laughs> do they not learn? No, he's taking, he's taking damage. And he's killed him. <laughs> <laughs> That was a bit overkill. It was massively <laughs> overkill. Look, Dimitri doesn't take shit, alright? He's been through the ringer. I like the way his hair's now just like he hasn't cut it for five years. It's the same hairstyle, just long. Yeah, so there's more Falcon Knights coming in. They're just gonna die. Oh, it's so frustrating. So they're, they're making the way down quite nicely. Uh, right, so mages, 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 what do we do? So, I don't want Felix boxed up there longer than I can have, so let us get. Let's get Shamir to kill these Pegasuses. And Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm gonna kill three of those things. Strength is all for a mercy. 
Um, let's get Felix down. There, if he takes a hit, I'm not really too fast. Let's get Gilbert wandering down. Slow as he is. Let's get Mercedes healing some people. Let's sit here in a glass jaw. Yeah, you can hold uh, A as well to fast forward animations. Uh, let us get. he wouldn't take damage. But he did. Uh, let's get what the did that mean? Was that some sort of state missile? Yeah, he's been like Ill. debuffed because of that miasma attack. <laughs> See you in the eternal flames. So like Dimitri's so far ahead in level because this is all he does is just he one shots everybody and gets the points for it. My city has not got the most mobility either. She's a bit slow. That's what this works. That's what you get. Very good. It did work. Um, oh, cool. He's got lots of mobility still. Ah, oh, so I put myself on the purple swirl. Got some steel gauntlets. Ah, okay. So is there any difference between the yellow swirls and the purple swirls? Yes, but I don't know. Okay. I'm not sure. What a waste. Got to the end. Go on, counter attack. Ah, oh, and he's going to kill him. Is that always a kill? Uh, yeah, it's going to hit them with so much damage that it's bound to be a one shot. Oh, I thought he was going to say nothing, why not? No, something always goes up, just that was a bad one, it was just two. Oh, and round two, come on! Oh, he took damage. And then... Oh! Go on, Sylvain! Ah! Oh. Ooh, heavy knight. Dodge! Oh, Ooh. shit! Don't combo, don't combo. Heal up Cyril. Yep. I mean, if I lose people, it's not good, but it's not the end of the world either. Oh, what? Oh, no, didn't mind. <laughs> the Queen of Combos. I really need to give her a sword and train her up in swords. So I've got, I'm getting these around the flank now. So what they can start doing is chipping away at the left hand, uh, from the right hand side into the left, yeah. and drawing away forces. It's, it's been telling us I've got a low battery for quite a long time now. At some point it's just going to go. So you could travel better because it was on the path, is Yes, right? so you've got massive mobility as a cavalry unit, but are severely hindered by um, yeah. like non-road terrain. Okay, let's get Felix in the in the game. That's rubbish. That'll do. Pointless. Uh Need to heal up, uh, Cyril. I think that helps. she's really used to all the setters. She's actually a pretty powerful mage in her own right as well. She does a lot of damage if you let her. She's killed so many people this much. Come 
for my severe backup gilbert. What is it? We'll try it. I'll do. Thank you. So I don't really want to move him anywhere, so I'm just gonna send him in with killing edge and kill those archers. I'll do! I was like, ah, she's, he's like a real sweet little orphan boy. <laughs> I've just turned him into an assassin. <laughs> mm. Mm. Might be sacrificing Cyril there. I'm gonna put him on the flank. Ready for next turn. Uh, Dimitri. Go on, Dimitri, kill something for your turn, for a change. It's true. Eh? It's not even a combo, it's just like down. Oh, was he retreating? Always oh, doing a. Oh, shit. This is quite a good gambit. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what a pin. Fucking OP man, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, so you can get like um, different items like uh, that turn your melee units into range units, like throwing axes and throwing spears. So if you were playing on hard mode, might they not miss as much? Um, I think there's more units, they're probably a little bit cleverer. Stronger, maybe. M maybe stronger, I think it's more to do with the strategy element. You can make less mistakes. To be honest, at this rate, I could probably swoop in Sylvain and Dingrid from behind and assassinate the general. I don't actually have to kill all these. And to that end... I don't know, just put them all in wait. So they're all lined up together supporting each other. Ah, uh, where's Lysithia? Come on, Lysithia, stop making your way towards them. Apologies. Uh, let's get Ash further forward. Ooh, he's pretty wounded, actually. I'll tell you what, we'll do with Ash. Um. Let's kill this mage. Mages, mages have me worried. I don't like them. Don't trust magic users. <laughs> Jesus. Nice form. So let us get Felix down against that barbarian. It was meant to be. So that's my leaven sword, it's my new lightning sword, it's very fancy. Uh, steel board. Duh, 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 duh. These guys are all pretty tough. Do they come back, or is it just the Pegasus? It seems to be just the Pegasuses. Even if I die, it's very um, dramatic. He's quite low health. Oh, he is, isn't he? Shit. Um... I didn't realize he was that bad, actually. Should have healed him, not Ash. Yeah. 
made a mistake here. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, the numbers are getting bigger. Uh, I think they've made a mistake. I think I'm going to be able to swoop in and assassinate their leader. Told you one's never enough for Shamir. I like the way their, their armor knights aren't impervious to damage. Might not. I think she's just so fast that them. She just like catwheels out the way. Yeah, she's got really high, like, just evasion for heavy units like that. Third time's a charm. Oh no, it's enough for them. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, Felix is very good at comboing. It's a lightning sword. Yeah, it's my eleven sword. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I did not see that. No, did a T though. Let's keep our guard up. Told him I said this was uh, a very powerful mage. She just doesn't get the fight often. It wasn't for that guy's good. You fucking murdered him with fire. Fire attack is ready. Now. Oh, was that so? so many units, and you still can't defeat us. The Empire's generals are not quiet. Attack now. Oh, was I meant to capture that? <laughs> fire. Fire. fire all units retreat. I'll take on our person. Oh, so now the, the, the mission switch from us stopping them getting into the monastery. Into us eliminating them and stopping them from uh, escaping. That, yeah, because that hurting you now in the fight. Um, yeah, it will be. Let's get everyone out. We can't be careless. Doesn't matter because I'm gonna kill that knight anyway. Bad hit on the way back though. At least he didn't combo me. Uh, right. Oh, you know what? I might have fucked it up here. Just a scratch. Hmm. Just okay. to be next to him. What I'm gonna do? Turn back time. Cause. Ready when you are. I don't think they can get to him on this attack. So if I take that out with her, move her into position for next go. I don't think that general moves basically. I think you've got to attack him directly. Let's get him healed up. So they're just basically going to pounce on him next next turn. Uh, what have we got? So Gilbert. Let's get her out of danger, and then just melt this armor knight. Oh yeah! <laughs> there you go. It's done. Uh, Gilbert, you can take a punch, can't you, buddy? Actually, hammer's better against armor. It cracks it. It's a fancy looking hammer. Uh, who else we got? Oh, hold on. Magic ball. And, uh, oh, shit. So he's got spears and bows. Yeah, sword and bow. So he can fight range and close up, and he does mega combos at close up. Tell you what I can do. If I go there. Combat art, sublime heaven, sublime creator sword. 
So this is a special sword that Violet gets in the storyline. It lets him, it's like a chain whip thing. Oh yeah. It lets you attack from range. That was probably the biggest heavy hitting thing I've seen. Yep, he's pretty powerful. <laughs> so that, that goal give me an XP orb. Bonus XP basically. Battery depleted. Oh, well you said it was going to happen. <laughs> you said it. Oh. oh, sorry. You claimed it. It nearly, uh, it nearly held out. After resort to the old Joy Cons. This uh, this fight's really cool to in now. Uh, oh Christ, I've lost my barons, and it's it's weird playing with uh, a split Joy Con. Uh, right, let's just push him through. I kill all the knights I did, didn't I? Right. Let's clean up. Yeah. Um, there we go. Oh, he's, he's coming out finally. <laughs> Is that just an insta kill? It might be. Yep, that was anticlimactic. Seems I've improved again. That was good. Capture him. A terrible battle. You'd get. So there you go. That's uh, that's that's the intro, and uh, I didn't think Ash did that much. Um, so that's kind of the kind of diversity of the the combat as it goes on. You get cavalry units, magical units, archers, swordsmen, spearmen, axemen, uh, everything in between. A mix of hybrid classes. There's environmental damage. The storylines play out. You've got to do kind of split fronts, flanks. There's a, there's a lot going on. It's it's very very strategic. It's it's, it's really good, and you've got the kind of drama laid on top of it. Um, so do you feel that it's got the replayability? Yeah, see, I, I, I'm halfway through my Blue Lions playthrough. Oh god, I'm dropping my Joy-Con now. Um, and I really do want to go back through and play the Black Eagles because the storyline goes to some interesting places, especially at, at the halfway mark. It kind of treads water for the first half, but you get to know the characters. That's very much the characters that carry it over. Um, but, oh, there we go. Um, but yeah, it's it's good. It's it's really good, and it's been number one in the charts since it came out. And for such a weird <laughs> niche genre, anime turn-based tactical strategy, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I would say. Um, I'm not gonna say. Uh, yes. Oh no, that's not. just because this isn't my uh, my main file anymore. Uh, so let's take it back to the menu. So yeah, that, that's our spotlight on Fire Emblem Three Houses. It's been a very long spotlight because it's a very kind of casual, slow-paced game. Uh, thanks for sticking with us, Kel. Um, okay. Hopefully it shows off, gives you an idea of what the game's like. Uh, it's really, really good, though. Really good. Uh, definitely a game you have to get stuck into and, and invest time into, but uh, really, really enjoying it.